Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Dork Entertainment. Today we have a very special review, our first movie review for the channel. We're going to be reviewing Avengers Endgame. Now this is a very special movie. Um, it released in Australia on the 24th of April. Uh, I went to go watch this with my friends uh, on the 24th of April in IMAX 3D, which was absolutely brilliant. Uh, 3D is sometimes hit and miss, but Disney and Marvel know how to do their 3D. If you haven't watched this movie in 3D, I suggest you do watch it. Even if you don't like 3D, I think this might change your mind. Uh, the 3D is really good in this, i got to say. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the movie. Before we do, I'm just going to light up my Infinity Stones gauntlet. There you go. Nice and bright. Uh, so in case anything goes wrong, I'm just going to snap and I'm going to turn everything on. In the beginning, uh, Avengers Infinity War, when that came out, uh, we were there first day uh, to watch that movie. And it absolutely blew my mind. Uh, the pacing was excellent of that movie and the ending was just wow. Uh, you know, it's something that you probably, a lot of people did, did not expect would happen. Uh, then there was the long wait, one year, even though it's only one year, but it did seem like a very long time to wait for the second part of uh, this uh, Avengers Endgame Infinity War saga. Now, when we watch this movie, let's just break it down. Let's, let's just break it down initially into three parts. So before we get into this, start, I'd also just like to say that uh, this review will have spoilers in it. The embargo on spoilers has now been lifted. So you've probably seen or heard a lot of things about uh, Endgame. So if, if you still haven't watched this movie yet, uh, I, I suggest you, you wait, wait to watch this movie first, then, you know, come and listen to my thoughts on this film. But if you have watched it and, you know, you're ready to go ahead and listen to my thoughts, let's continue with this review. Let's break this movie down into three parts. So we've got the beginning, uh, which is sort of a continuation basically from Endgame, oh, sorry, Infinity War. Thanos has snapped his fingers and destroyed half the population. Which, in the beginning of this movie, Endgame, it starts off on a very somber note. So half the population is already gone. Everyone is quite distant. You know, everyone is dealing uh, with their loss in their own sort of way. Each character, they, they build up each character's loss or how they are dealing with the loss in a different way. When we get to the point where they do all get back together and decide to go after Thanos, uh, it's a very uplifting moment when they do eventually chop Thanos of, Thanos's head off realizing that they can't really do or undo what Thanos has done. Uh, it's sort of a very bittersweet moment. Five years pass, basically. And this is where we get into the second portion of the movie. Now, they basically are going to time travel back in time, collect stones from different timelines, bring them back, and then try to undo what Thanos's snap did. And then there's the last part, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, it's every comic book slash Marvel uh, fans dream. Uh, I won't go into too much detail, but it's pretty much uh, what you want in a comic book movie. Now, the ending, I got to say, it was quite sad, but there are certain characters Captain America, Marvel Man, who have been uh, with this 10 year arc since the beginning. And you can understand that their arc is probably going to end. And when Iron Man does uh, obtain the stones and he does snap his fingers to undo everything, actually to destroy all of Thanos' army and, uh, you know, destroy Thanos in the process, he pretty much sacrifices himself, Iron Man, for the sake of humanity. He realizes that he's the only one who can actually do it when Doctor Strange, you know, says this is the one chance and he does it. Now that that moment is is probably gonna remain in 
in cinema history as one of the best moments ever um, witnessed on screen. You know, just the way Iron Man delivers his lines, uh, you know, his final lines there. Uh, I am Iron Man and snap. It's, it's all gone. Now, <clears throat> unfortunately, Iron Man does die in this movie. So it's pretty much the end for Iron Man. Uh, Captain America goes back in time, lives out his life, uh, you know, grows old and comes back. So his story arc is also finished. It's interesting, though, that they continued uh, Thor's story arc. So there were contract negotiations going on, I believe, and uh, Thor will continue with the Guardians of the Galaxy. And I think he does have another movie coming up, uh, Mighty Thor. Black Panther also has a sequel coming up so that, you know, his story arc continues as well. Uh, and I don't know, I'm not really sure what they're going to do with Hulk. Now, Hulk was one of the main surprises of this movie. Uh, in the beginning, you know, everyone was thinking, you know what, in this movie, the Hulk is going to get his revenge with Thanos, the rematch. He didn't quite get that, get that rematch, but what we got was uh, something a different sort of version of Hulk. So somewhere in the middle of Bruce Banner and the Hulk, uh, we could call him the Bulk, He's a smart version of the Hulk, basically, and he can control his anger. So I thought that, that was brilliant. That was something different, you know, something that they've hidden from the pre-movie uh, trailers and teasers. And of course, Thor being a bit overweight, uh, you know, heavily bearded. Uh, that's just how he was dealing with, uh, you know, the Thanos snap and not being able to bring everyone back initially. Let's just start off with the sound. Sound um, is excellent. Uh, cinematography is brilliant. And I have to say the acting is top notch. Now the CGI, most of the time it's really good. Uh, the detail on some of the CGI characters like Rocket Raccoon, the detail on uh, Thanos' face is absolutely amazing. Like they, I don't know how they've done it, but it looks real but then you get to hulk now i don't know why it maybe it's intentional but i'm not really sure but i found some of hulk cgi very smooth or a bit too blurry now, i don't know if that's just how it's supposed to look but um it wasn't quite there for me in this movie i gotta say um there have been previous iterations of hulk which i find had more detail but I don't know. Maybe it was the ten intentional. Maybe it wasn't. The movie has actually gone on to... I'm just having a look at some of the stats now. So Avengers Endgame, uh, overall, worldwide gross. It's coming in at number two now. Number two behind Avatar. So Avatar totaled $2.7 billion worldwide. Avengers Endgame is now up to $2.3 billion. And it's only been two weeks. So you can imagine this is going to become the best movie or the highest grossing movie of all time. Now, I don't know how they're going to beat that. There are endless what, four Avatar movies coming out. Uh, there is uh, four more Star Wars movies coming out, including the one end of this year and a whole new trilogy, which I don't know. I don't think they'll be able to beat Avengers Endgame. Uh, this movie is a culmination of 10 years of work, uh, 10 years of character building, uh, and, you know, it's it's the final movie of that arc. Now, there is one more movie coming out, Spider-Man Far From Home, which is supposed to be the last movie of uh, Phase 3, I think it is, Phase 3. Uh, but uh, Avengers Endgame is kind of like the, the end game, basically. It is the end game. I, I don't know how else to describe it. It's the end game for Marvel movies in this phase, in this arc. Um, look, to be honest, I would give this movie a 9.5 out of 10. Now, you you know, you may ask, why not 10 out of 10? Well, 0.5, I've got to say, uh, I'm taking 0.5 off just because the initial part of the movie, going into maybe two thirds of the movie, the pacing is a little bit slow. Now, I understand that it's probably intentional because they're going to start off slow and then they build up. Uh, but it definitely does pick up in the last hour. Uh, the last hour is absolutely mind-blowing. 
uh, it just goes bang, bang, bang. You know, uh, the pace picks up immensely and we get uh, the ending we were all hoping for. So I really hope you did enjoy the movie as much as I did. 9.5 out of 10. Uh, and I'm not really sure um, where they're going to go from here because Spider-Man uh, Far From Home will be the last movie of Phase 3. But when they begin Phase 4, it will be, I'm guessing, starting the whole um, next arc again. Uh, so it's going to be hard to compare. Everyone's going to compare it to the last best movie, which was is going to be Avengers Endgame. And I don't know how they're going to fare against that. I have heard uh, rumors um, that the next uh, couple of arcs uh, building up to, you know, the final movie, it's not going to be as long as, you know, this arc has been with, with um, the Infinity Stones uh, spanning 10 years. So the next, I believe the next uh, couple of arcs are going to be about six movies. So we may get, uh, f you know, five or five build up movies and then that one big ending movie that's what i've heard uh, for the next couple of arcs so which is good because iron man when that came out in 2008 uh, that was really the beginning of marvel's new foray into movies um they did have hulk before that and an iteration of spider-man before that as well a couple of iterations uh, but iron man was really the beginning of uh, this whole new marvel cinematic universe and uh, that was 10 years so that that spanned I don't even, kind of even remember how many movies now, but a lot of movies, 10 years worth of movies. Uh, that's why I think also it was quite emotional watching Endgame because you know it is the end for a lot of these characters um, and you don't really know where they're going to go from here. Yeah, look, this is going to remain probably one of the best movies I have ever seen uh, and definitely the best movie of the year. I don't think this will be beat in terms of quality, uh, in terms of uh, acting and... You may argue with there may be better acting movies with better actors in there, but um, overall, I think Endgame is probably the best movie of the year. Uh, there is going to be approximately three Marvel movies per year starting from 2020, so there's still quite a lot of movies. Uh, considering you know, imagine three years from now, we'll have nine uh, Marvel movies coming out and maybe two. Uh, you know, end game type movies in there somewhere. So it's going to be really, a really interesting time the next couple of years for Marvel because they have now built up, completed one arc uh, with end game, and now they have to start again. So uh, people saying that Spider Man may be the lead taking over from Iron Man, uh, judging by some of the, uh, you know, first look uh, trailers of Spider Man Far From Home. I don't think that's going to be the case because I believe Sony are still quite heavily involved with Spider-Man and it's not completely with Marvel yet. Um, so I don't think Sp I don't think Spider-Man will be uh, the lead, but who knows that anything can happen. Uh, we are going to have the X-Men, uh, Fantastic Four, uh, a lot of these uh, Fox properties. Who have now come over to Disney, who uh, you know own Marvel as well. We're going to see those characters come into uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe too. So, no movies have been announced. Um, Kevin Feige has indeed said that it may be, it may actually be five years or so since we see any X Men characters um, in the Marvel movies. That's a long time um, to hold on to something like that, but. I'm guessing they go. They are going to reboot all of it, uh, so you know to get uh, the next X Men movie, which is going to come out soon, to get that out of everyone's mind, they're going to need a bit of time. And eventually, when X Men does come come out, it's going to be excellent. So I hope you guys enjoyed the movie. Let me know if you guys have watched it. What you think of the movie? Um, you know, what were some of the flaws? You know, I, I am such a big Marvel fan that it may be biased, but I couldn't really see uh, that many flaws. There was only a few flaws that I picked up, uh, but I really love this movie. I think it's one of the best movies, and I'll definitely be picking up the uh, massive Blu-ray box set that will probably come out. Oh God, how expensive is that going to be? Um, spanning uh, 
the 10 years from 2008 and ending with starting with Iron Man ending with Avengers Endgame that is going to be one massive box set um, but I will definitely be buying that when that comes out so I hope you enjoyed my review um, this is my first review so uh, it, it can only get better from this I'm hoping hoping that it will uh, get better with some of my other reviews um, I hope I didn't ramble on too much it was pretty much a ramble uh, but I really enjoyed this movie 9.5 out of 10 uh, so if you haven't seen it, please go out and see it. Watching it in the cinema is the only way to watch it, really. Uh, and buying it on Blu-ray later on will be more of a collector's thing. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Please like this video, uh, share and subscribe to this channel. Uh, and peace out. Have a good day.